Good evening and welcome to Resource PNG. On the show we continue with our third series of documentaries sponsored by the Chamber of Mines and Petroleum to highlight the scope of resource industry activities in the country. Tonight we look at oil production in PNG. We look at oil fields from Kutubu to newer fields from Moran, Gobe and southeast Monanda. We also take a look at one company that has been synonymous with oil production in the past decade, Oil Search Limited. We see how the company has grown since buying out and taking over operatorship from Chevron New Guinea in 2003. PNG's oil fields stretch from the original discovery at Kutubu to newer fields in Moran, Gobe and southeast Mananda. The production facilities are linked by a pipeline all the way to the Kumul export terminal in the Gulf of Papua. Since oil production began in 1992, output has been declining steadily. From a peak of about 150,000 barrels a day, output has now fallen to around 30,000 barrels. The industry remains in robust shape because of the leap in prices to over 100 US dollars a barrel and because much of the oil area is about to be integrated into a much larger liquefied natural gas project that is due to commence exports next year. In the past decade, oil and gas production in Papua New Guinea has been synonymous with one company, Oil Search Limited. This followed a number of takeovers since the 1980s, culminating in the purchase of oil assets owned by Chevron New Guinea in October 2003. Buying Chevron out and reinvesting uh, money into those oil fields saw a significant increase in production and an arresting of the decline. So since that time, we've added around 100 million barrels of extra resource and added probably 30 or 40 years of oil life to those oil fields. I looked at how much tax had been paid by ourselves and our joint venture partners since uh, oil, start, oil production started in 1992. And it's close to $15 billion in, in direct and indirect taxation. And I suppose I, I share the frustration sometimes with our, our uh, landowners that says, well, actually, have not seen too much happen out in the in the areas around our operations in the oil field areas or or gas field areas and hides. And, and reality is, money has been put into the system. It has been um, distributed in part to to where it should go. Unfortunately, we've not seen quite enough traction with the delivery of extra services uh, and infrastructure on the ground. Uh, and that clearly is a concern to us and w we do a number of things to help. We, we clearly think that tax credit projects that deliver schools and hospitals and roads, etc., have been a very good way of delivering infrastructure, efficient way of doing, doing that in, in our local area. The discovery of an additional 20 billion kina worth of oil has been of great benefit, not only to oil search but also to Papua New Guinea. The oil business makes up about 15% of the total uh, economy in PNG. The export revenue is about 15% of the, the total economy. Yeah. That'll more than well, that'll almost quadruple with the the development of PNG LNG. So it's a very significant, will be very very significant business in in changing this country and the fortunes of oil search. The reality is that that oil search is now a, a significant uh, LNG owner. It owns 29% of PNG LNG. It continues to have around 60% ownership of the oil fields and will contribute, the, those oil fields will contribute about 20% of the gas into PNG LNG. Right. So we, we have spent in PNG since 2003, since taking over operatorship, about 15 billion kina since that time in developing oil fields and subsequently PNG LNG. Mm. 
and we anticipate that our future investments out to 2020 are probably going to be about the same order of magnitude. Clearly, the government owned 15% of, of the company, and the government have been uh, have taken the benefits of uh, oil search's growth over the years, uh, and we've provided them with something since. Um, we did the merger with Origin Minerals, a 640% return on their investment since yeah. 2003. An enormous return. Mm -hmm. I think it would be one that would be difficult to beat uh, in other investments that they may have made. Kutubu was discovered in 1986 and began production in 1992. Following the subsequent discovery of Moran, Gobe and Mananda, these oil fields have been at the heart of PNG's oil production. Oil Search became operator of these fields in 2003, where it purchased the equity held by the US multinational company Chevron. This happened after the only other bidder from the Middle East had pulled out. Today Oil Search manages all PNG's oil fields. I look after uh, all of the production uh, sites and facilities across uh, oil search operations from uh, Hides uh, through to Kutubu, Gobi and the marine terminal. We've got a, around about 115 oil wells uh, across the operation. So what kind of numbers are you looking at? Uh, the plant itself was designed for 120,000 barrels per day um, and 180 million standard cubic feet of gas uh, per day with 20,000 barrels of water production per day. At the moment, we're just averaging around uh, 30,000 barrels per day now, and it has been just basically natural decline of the reservoir that we, we, where we're producing our fields from. The control room may look small, but don't let that fool you. This place monitors and controls everything from the wellheads all the way down to the loading dock at the Kumul terminal. With the touch of a button, there can be drastic impact. Now, this is the main one, facility ESD. That button, when you switch it on, it shuts the whole place down. There's a little button there, but it's got a lot of action on it. <laughs> so we don't normally touch it, unless otherwise it's deemed necessary for us to shut, uh, I mean, touch that button. More of this documentary after the break. Welcome back. In this segment, we look at the process of oil production. The oil from the oil field wellheads enters the system through inlets. It goes through a slug catcher to enable a consistent flow into the production facility. Slug catcher is primarily to stabilize the flow into the plant. From here, it is sent to the free phase separator. The separator splits up the contents using gravity. Gas, being lighter, floats up to the top of the vessel. Crude oil in the middle and water at the bottom. Those are the vessels, there's nothing complicated. It's just based on retention time. It separates oil, gas and water based on the uh, properties, the densities. Now we're interested in oil. So oil gets into the stabilizers. Okay, this is the uh, operating stabilizer we have right now. Cold crude comes, goes into the stabilizer. We have a furnace that heats up the crude. When we heat up the crude, it vaporizes a light ends in the crude, and that stabilizes the crude for export. A couple of upgrades that we've done in the, in the production facility includes um, new dehydration packages. Um, we also uh, have what we're calling the, the gas commissioning unit. That is a unit that will be used for uh, the first gas into the um, the export into uh, the LNG gas plant. Now that oil is priced at 100 US dollars a barrel and PNG's production is in steady decline, one of the major challenges facing oil search is the task of finding more oil in its operating areas. The price tag on failure is immense because every single development well can cost 150 million kina or more. Part of the exploration success comes with the so-called wildcat wells that target new discoveries. The oil search success also comes from areas close to current operations and stepping out into smaller nearby pools of oil. 
The recent Mananda 5 discovery will add an estimated 15,000 barrels per day to production in the next three to four years. However, step-out wells such as the one recently completed at Usano helps to moderate falling output by finding new oil pools that are quickly brought into production. And what goes into drilling? Hello, my name is Wally Jackenchuk. I'm the Senior Drilling Supervisor for Oil Search here at this particular location. Rigs are worked all year round. As a drilling supervisor, Wally Jakimzuk's day starts early, very, very early. My day would start around about 4.30, have breakfast, I'd be on location at 5 o'clock in the morning. Uh, you go through all the reports and activities from the previous night, uh, address those, then we've got look-aheads that we've got to get out to all the uh, management and the reports. Then we have our 5.30 meeting with the crews uh, discussing the, the day's operations. Then emails and walkthroughs around the rig before the next crew change at 11.30 a.m. We have another meeting, a pre-town meeting, again with the next crew that come on at noon, and that goes at 11.30 or starts at 11.30. And uh, through the day, there's day-to-day -day operations that are going on and addressing different businesses. The rig is a 24-hour operation. Workers and equipment are always moving, either being brought in or taken out. Sometimes the rigs are supported by a road network. Production of first oil from Kutubu was an exciting time for PNG. It followed more than six decades of exploration. The discovery represented a world-scale find of 300 million barrels, a figure that was bypassed some years ago. Despite the high level of optimism, PNG output faced a steady decline, even though new fields were found at Gobe, Moran and Mananda. Although Oilsearch only took over the oil fields in 2003, the company was the first in PNG to commence production of hydrocarbons. In 1991, it began to produce gas from the Hydes field to help generate power for the Pogara gold mine. This supply continues even today, more than two decades later. For some years, the Hyde's operation, the oldest oil and gas facility in PNG, has been run entirely by Papua New Guineans. At the Hyde's operation, the entire team of Papua New Guineans is led by Mapia Olewala, a nephew of the late Premier of Western Province. The operation is run by nationals. It's, it's very significant to national uh, supervisors because we come from various uh, cultural backgrounds and try to work together as a team. With a national running the place, it's, it's so much easy. And you can also resolve a lot of conflict of interest within the work, work group and get the maximum out of the guys to do a better job every time here. Oil Search has an illustrious history in PNG. It is the only major resource company with its head office in Port Moresby. Well, it's been a long journey, uh, and uh, in the early years, um, the challenges of logistics and getting around Papua New Guinea, understanding what the geology was and uh, the basics to find oil and gas was really very, very challenging. Many of the original pioneers spent uh, years out in the field walking uh, with a group of uh, national supporters and, uh, and people who helped them. and walked many, many kilometres through the jungle trying to establish where the oil and gas was here. Very, very difficult terrain, very difficult logistics and support, mm. and without air support specifically in the early years, really very, very challenging. They were true heroes of, and heroines of, uh, of pioneer, pioneering oil and gas exploration. After the Second World War through to uh, 1961 or 62, every year, uh, oil search shareholders had to dip into their pockets to uh, help fund that, that exploration. Right. And oil search went from low equities to high equities and back to low equities as work was carried out. Clearly in PNG, the first major gas discoveries were made in, in the 80s, in, at Juhar, at, at Pinyang and, and right. at Hydes. And of course, because of the remoteness of those fields, uh, it's taken a long time for a commercial uh, path to uh, um, 
bring money into the, and develop those resources, uh, it's taken a long time to get to that stage. We're just right. now seeing that with LNG. Oil was discovered in, um, in the mid-80s, and uh, of course Kudabu was developed in a very, very, very world-class way by Chevron New Guinea at the time, and oil production started in 1992. Oil production was very strong at that time, but um, I, more recently, obviously, with decline and the, the uh, lack of discoveries of oil mm -hmm. since that time, um, production's dropped. But uh, for oil search, for firstly, the production of oil in 1992 was a big step. We were a 200 million market cap company, very small company owning about 7% of the oil business at that time. Right. With subsequent acquisitions plowing the money that we made out of Kudabu back into country, we've grown the business by acquiring BP's assets and then Chevron's assets and taking over operatorship. Uh, and they were major milestones that have driven to the, com the company to where it's now a $10 billion market cap company and one of the most successful companies on the ASX. Resource PNG continues when we return. Continuing our third feature in a series of documentaries sponsored by the Chamber of Mines and Petroleum, in this next segment, we look at the work of oil search and community affairs under the tax credit scheme. Peter Botten now heads up a company that has grown some 50-fold in two decades. He spends considerable time in Australia and internationally promoting the company, but he is well known in the remote villages from Hides and Kutubu to Gobe. Old Search plays a very active role in the local community affairs and is closely involved with agriculture, health and education for more than 70,000 people in its footprint area. My name is Paul Sapake. I am the community affairs uh, field manager uh, responsible for the community affairs activities within Old Search operations covering heights, Kudubu, Moran, Southeast Mananda, uh, rolling down to Gobe, PDL 3 and 4, the pipeline, uh, villages, PL2, all the way to Kopi, uh, Kikori area, and ends down at uh, Kumu Terminal. So we work, cover a whole lot of you know, areas with different distinct groups, um, four different provinces. The fourth one is the western, which is going back to the west. We've had some pro projects around that area as well, but it's four districts covering 10 LLGs and more than 300 villages. So you see uh, where we, we operate. Uh, and, and some of these villages are uh, remote, only accessible, accessible by uh, uh, helicopter, twin order. Other villages we travel long distances by road and by river system, river trucks. Uh, according to our records of last year's uh, statistics, it's the 70,000 plus population covering uh, areas from Hyde all the way to uh, uh, Kikori and some parts of Western Province. All Search has carried out a number of community projects as part of its tax credit scheme including the construction of several schools. The Kutubu High School established in 1999 with two classes of 40 students each. The school grew over the years and by early 2012 it accommodated 300 students. But with the introduction of free education, the number of the students has increased by almost 50% to the 500 mark. Today this high school boasts a number of facilities, which include a two-story science laboratory, a library, dormitories for students, and 10 classrooms. In the years to come, the school board aims to develop a secondary school as well. All Search's contribution has been integral in the school's development. All Search is a partner in the development of this nation. All Search, though, the bottom line is to make money for its shareholders and its joint venture partners. But at the same time, 
all sets through a mutual cooperation, a mutual understanding with the people. Oil sets, similarly with any other developers that come into Papua New Guinea, not necessarily in Kudubu, but elsewhere in Papua New Guinea, are here to make money for the shareholders. And at the same time, they pay tax to the government. And it is the government that are there to deliver to the people what is rightfully deserved for the people. And uh, I thank all sets for taking at least Kutub High School a step further to the National Department of Planning as well as IRC. And now we are going through the third stage of Kutub High School, we're putting up a few more houses for the teachers here. The structures that you can see here are funded through the tax credit scheme, which the National Department of Education and IRC, as well as the Southern Heights Provincial Government have always in their consultation process, agreed and approved to fund tax credit scheme projects in the project area, project impacted regions, as well as anywhere else in Papua New Guinea. At the same time, developers, operators must realize that when the government alone cannot deliver people's expectations, we need help from developers, from operators, from NGOs. That is the way to go forward. But Kutubu High School is not the only educational institution that benefits from oil searches projects for the community. The Meloba Elementary School in Hyde's has been constructed and funded by AllSearch. Local schools in Hyde's collect fuel on a regular basis from AllSearch. Uh, my name is uh, Mr. Mark Harabe. I'm the headmaster of uh, Hoyebia High School in Tari, Helapro. I'm very proud, thank you, to uh, uh, mention that uh, AllSearch has been continuously helping us and over the last seven years, uh, we have been receiving 400 uh, liters of fuel every month all throughout the year, and uh, that is free of charge. That's a community uh, from the Community Affairs uh, uh, Division of the uh, Oil Church uh, in here. Uh, actually, uh, apart from the fuel donations, they do also give uh, uh, books and uh, library books, and uh, uh, they do uh, visit schools and find out uh, what uh, need we have uh, through the Community Affairs. Yet another school built about three years ago by all search is the Ayo Community School. Do we have school now? No. No, we have a so reason why we are at the school. And I enjoy teaching because it's a career that I've decided to choose. So no matter in the bush, across the river I, I still have to go. Uh, save the souls who are far behind the mountains. So this is, uh, I mean, in my career, I did not go elsewhere in the towns or near to the towns. I served mostly in Kutubu. More when we come back. Thanks for staying with us. We look at Oil Search Limited's contribution to health and agriculture. Oil Search has put in great effort to improve the health of its workers, their families, and the communities in which it operates. Uh, the company does uh, residual spraying. Uh, 
there was uh, the, the number of deaths for malaria was uh, quite uh, high. Uh, and uh, after that, for, the, for a number of years now, uh, that uh, uh, percentage has, has fallen way down, you know, about uh, uh, 70%. The spraying uh, program has been very successful and we continue to do so and uh, I'm glad to say that there's no uh, further death from malaria. My uh, nature of work is uh, in the area of uh, HIV and AIDS and um, I am a program officer with Allset uh, representing the public health uh, with Allset. Uh, we provide training to the local uh, nurses and uh, training meaning that we train them in all basic HIV information and that leading to um, nurses being selected in those health facilities to come uh, to be trained under the health department to prescribe HIV medicine and my role is to provide uh, supervisory, supervise the staff and continuously mentor them on this uh, HIV medicine, care and counseling and treatment and uh, education, especially in awareness to the community. The uh, maternal child uh, death, uh, the five years I've been here, uh, I haven't, we haven't come across any mom that um, died. I'm privileged to work uh, for a company that has moved into the community where um, uh, transport accessibility and uh, drug accessibility, uh, those things were not I came here five years, like seven years I've been with the company, and I see that those are the things that hindered the health of uh, people in general, and uh, when the company is providing that, it's, it's like, uh, like HIV program was never one of the programs. It was there, but as we say, it's new, but the MCH, we're providing uh, them with transport, they go out, so I see that what the company is doing is empowering the nurses as well as uh, accessibility to treatment is, uh, for the people in general is good as improved. And uh, I've been uh, working here for 27 years at this centre. Uh, with our MCH work I believe uh, we've uh, improved a lot with the children's uh, clinic and antenatal mothers, family planning. And when this uh, visit is set up through, we see there's a lot coming, and which is good. Today I'm happy to sit here and tell you that uh, 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 Elf Foundation is based in Thare, and I am happy that there were needs out there. We couldn't go, but now, uh, uh, the Health Foundation is uh, taking care of Ella, and Ella are three districts, uh, and the uh, Ella team are addressing that, and uh, also Morobe province. In order to ensure nothing comes in the way of good health service delivery, all search through the tax credit scheme has constructed homes for nurses working at the Juni Clinic. Nurses say their work standard has improved after moving into their new homes. For one of them, it is her first time to live in a permanent house, after 20 years of service in the health sector, working out of the village settings. Anna Kambara has been working as a community health worker for over 20 years. It's a new and exciting experience for her and her family, who are used to living in traditional style housing. Mrs Kambara and fellow nurse Miriam Guy moved into their new homes in December of 2012. Mrs Guy has been working in Juni Clinic since 2000. She lives in her new house with her husband and their five children. Yeah, well, I'm very proud to have that new house, which, is, which has given me easy life. I moved in, in last year, December, and I'm very proud and thankful to All Sets and Tax Credit Scheme and GDC, Gigira. All Sets employed the services of Gigira Development Company, a landowner company to help build the nurses, their new homes. But we had built uh, so many classrooms uh, and the staff houses, as well as the uh, maintenance of the uh, uh, staff health uh, facilities throughout the region, which extended from uh, 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 Purani, uh, Hiwanda, uh, Idawi, uh, Juni, which is here, and then to uh, 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 Komo Mananda. Yeah, 
Slow pain, Marcy, you sell me a muscle price. Mr. Pain, Marcy, Miss Adam Low. I'm not paying low to dinner. The Maracin Storekeeper Program is a unique and innovative approach to providing early diagnosis and treatment in rural parts of Papua New Guinea. By training village ladies, all search has created immediate access to malaria, testing and treatment. Village treatment providers in Papua New Guinea usually are women, are known as Maracin Storekeepers. They are trained in basic malaria diagnosis using a rapid diagnostic kit and supply pre-packaged malaria medication. The All Search Health Foundation supplies them with color-coded dosages to ensure accurate dosing. This is especially important for children. With access to health centers often challenging, the Morrison Storekeeper is easily accessible for quick diagnosis and treatment. This social business model not only provides life-saving malaria treatment close to home, but also aids in meeting social development goals like reducing poverty and improving gender equality. The All Search Health Foundation established and leads the Morrison Storekeeper or MSK program in the Kutubu area in the Southern Highlands. It is now being rolled out in other areas in Papua New Guinea. Traditionally in PNG, food is mainly produced through subsistence farming. However, this is changing as the population increases and urbanization adds pressure on traditional food security systems, threatening quality of life and health as well as the environment. <laughs> A focus of World Search's community affairs activities is therefore supporting the establishment of sustainable agricultural enterprises. These enterprises, particularly those run by women, align themselves with World Search's multiple sustainable development priorities, including improved food security, economic development, conservation, and health. World Search provides governance to local groups to help them form business cooperatives so they can commercialize agricultural activities using their surplus produce. They also provide these cooperatives with startup material and skills training to help carry out various farming and husbandry activities. Also, they found him money in CDI. That's our NGO, which also found him this is like NGO. Now, the world is funding this money. I'm a comeback law or organization group. Who said they organized? They stopped this like oil field. Now, me blah, I go give him a profile for me blah. Through that, or look, look, now come help me blah, look, kind of training. Kindness may help. How look, cook him nutrition, cook him, cook him good, like, yeah, yeah. So, my have him said, kind of, since I said, come. Mm. Kind of, since I said, where well, a local mother never saw this type of cola set. Now I'm some of them cola set. And so then said, me bless some of them. All see their line in me blend and me bless some of them. Now, that's her mother there. She's one of the coordinator. That's a four thousand. I'm some of them set. Now, can you know some old mama, you know, some of them all seven and all ending money in Cambro all yet. Now, also has been training me blah, some blah, how to manage money. No, because fans, me blah, organize them group, me blah, walk them slow walk. Me blah, so throw me money, picnic, picnic, that's all. That's why also he organize him one blah, training blah, me blah, law, inu, na melo lake. Na me blah, been all bidi, blah, else has come, na line me blah, law, how to manage him money. But it should be, Three weeks because a local lady can learn so much, but me blah I line him just one week. And big blah school, me blah can line him. MOSM. So that's how we, we work. And me blah form a cooperative society. That cooperative society, me blah call him Kudubu for Women Cooperative Society. All Search also helps these groups to transport their produce to markets and assist them with brokering supply contracts with camps run by All Search and other partners. 
This gives growers a reliable income source and the ability to invest in their enterprises. Resource PNG continues after the break. You're back with Resource PNG. We look at Oil Search's environmental management system and how the company is embarking on their next big step by venturing into the PNG LNG project as the second largest equity holder. We hear from Managing Director Peter Botton how the company will balance gas and oil production and how 30 to 40 years of resource life will be added to the business. Oil Search's Environment Management System in PNG meets international standards and is ISO certified. To ensure continuous improvement, the system undergoes a regular compliance review and internal audit and is continuously updated. Oil Search's compliance with certification standards is confirmed by independent external auditors every year. One look at Oil Search's project impact areas and you see that the environmental footprint is minimal. Okay, my name is Jerry Fareho uh, with the Environment Department. Uh, currently working as the Environment System Specialist. Uh, my role mainly is um, effectively trying to maintain uh, ISO 14001, which is an international recognized standard, uh, which satisfies our environmental management systems against an international standard, which is the 14001 standard. Normally with a certification process, it's quite difficult. You have to make sure that your systems are well established before you get seek ISO certification. So it took us about two to three years, uh, and eventually in 2009, um, we, we applied for an accredited body, uh, that is uh, NCSI Australia, to come in and uh, certify our management system. Um, the certification was quite important for OilSearch, in which it just further makes uh, a statement to the global, global community that OilSearch is really serious about protecting its environment. And now we're actually trying to show that by you know, accrediting to, a, I mean, certifying to an environmental management system which is uh, internationally recognized, which is the ISO 14001. So it was quite a significant gain for OilSearch. The government gives us certain licenses in which we operate uh, for OilSearch, apart from uh, complying with all those different conditions within the within the DC uh, permit. We do uh, extensive monitoring programs, um, mainly for our biggest operation, which is drilling. So for every drilling location, we do environmental monitoring, uh, mainly of the water quality, uh, of the water quality. And at the same time, we do our normal audits and inspections to make sure that our actual drilling programs uh, are within the environmental management plans, um, which are endorsed by uh, the Department of Environment and Conservation. Yeah. So apart from that, we also, um, do uh, an extensive re rehabilitation program. So after our drilling programs are co completed, uh, we go in and we further rehabilitate the place if there is a possibility to rehabilitate. We try to encourage natural regeneration. So we, when we drill in an actual location uh, for a wildcat, which is a new, new, new exploration well, uh, we clear the topsoil off, we stockpile it, so that after the program is complete, we bring back the topsoil, so we try to encourage natural regeneration. Okay. And if that doesn't go well, we, we try to rehabilitate as much as possible to bring back that, uh, the land back to its natural uh, uh, habitat. Yeah. Old Search is embarking on the next step in their history. They are venturing into gas. That is a very major step, but their management has every belief that this team can do it. We were, when, when I first joined, we, were, we, we had the challenge of very low oil prices. And so we were struggling uh, to, to cut costs in, in that low price environment. Uh, but uh, just within a few months, we, we began seeing that the PNG LNG project really was going to take off. And, and uh, so the rest of the journey has been preparing the organization for PNG LNG. 
Uh, the work is not done yet. Uh, there, there's still a lot to, to go until, we, until we're ready for first gas. Uh, but, the, but the team is diligently working and uh, I, I know oil search will, will achieve. This is a company that always does what it sets out to achieve. Uh, you look at the, look at the track record of, of oil search. Um, you know, for, from, the, from the initial buying out of B, the, buying the BP asset at Hyde's, they made a plan to buy the Chevron asset. They, they executed that and, and they planned to monetize gas and that was done. So oil search is, a, is an achieving company. Oil search is on the cusp of major new growth, and in the process, it will lose its status as PNG's only oil and gas producer. Sometime in 2014, the PNG LNG project will commence exports. ExxonMobil will be the operator, and oil search the second biggest equity holder. If you want to find big oil, and when I say big oil, I'm, I'm talking three, four, five hundred million barrels in any scale, that's a good, good resource, then you probably do have to look at overseas. And we have a number of opportunities in places like Kurdistan, where we've recently had an oil discovery, where the size and shape of, the, of those um, resources could be very material to the company. So although we focus very firmly on what we've got in Papua New Guinea, our production base in Papua New Guinea is very quickly going to be dominated by PNG LNG and the gas business overall. But balancing that, we'd like more oil. Uh, well, it's transformational for us. I mean, it, it, it provides us with, it, it quadruples our production base sometime in, in, from the first full year of production in, two, in 2015. We'll be producing somewhere between 28 and 29 million barrels of oil equivalent per year. This year we're producing about six and a half. So when you look at the cash flow that comes from that and our ability to deliver rewards to shareholders through dividends, our ability to drive further expansion opportunities um, in the country and elsewhere. What it does do, it, it adds 30, 40 years of life to our business. Right. And uh, that's a significant change to when Chevron, before they left, anticipated that the oil fields would stop production sometime in 2012-13. We now have 40 more years plus of life in our business here. We're spending a lot of money this year, um, some, somewhere around uh, $250 million, so 500 million kina, let's say, in country looking for, for new uh, resources, both oil and gas. We've got an, uh, another oil field that we hope to develop in PNG later this year at Menanda, which will be material in, in uh, bringing more oil into, into our business in 2015-16, hopefully. And we also will be looking for in new areas such as the offshore. Right now we have a very large semi-submersible drill rig sitting about uh, 30 minutes flying south of Port Moresby, mm -hmm. drilling some offshore holes for the first time. Offshore drilling has been taking place in the country for uh, around nine years. So all searches future is very much tied up with Papua New Guinea's future. Right. Uh, it's past and future. And our history has had some challenging times. and. Our future is extremely bright, as is the, 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 the future of the country. So I think if there's one dynamic that changes us from others, it's, it's our people. It's your people. So PNG's got a very uh, sophisticated process in its laws and its regime about how those benefits should be distributed. But I say, unfortunately, it hasn't been the most efficient way to make up for that and, and having people on our side, because we can't operate in the field without our communities wanting us to operate. Uh, I don't believe you can build a fence around your operation and effectively isolate your, your operation. Um, if, and that's not effective if you don't have the communities working with you. Mm. So I, I suppose the most important thing for us has been trying to put back something into the communities in our, in our areas. And we do that in many, many ways. We obviously employment of local people through our landowner companies, business development opportunities, training opportunities, employment uh, opportunities directly with all search and its contractors, as well as some of the softer issues like health programs. We set up our, our health foundation, the all mm -hmm. health foundation last year, because we'd built up a expertise within the organization on community, specifically community health issues such as malaria control and eradication, 
TB, HIV, AIDS management, all of which we saw as challenges in our local communities in the oil fields. And having built that expertise to, to look after our local communities, we saw that could be extrapolated across the rest of the country. And now we're working in nine provinces around the country, doing major HIV AIDS management programs, health education, child, child maternal health uh, issues, HIV AIDS I've, I've mentioned, malaria, etc. They're the sorts of things that as a large PNG company, we should be putting back into the community and like to do it on a much larger scale. Stay tuned for more of Resource PNG. Oil Search's success in discovering oil fields is attributed to the technical human resource base. In this segment, we feature some of these key people. We then finish off with a commentary from Greg Anderson, Executive Director of the Chamber of Mines and Petroleum. gas is genuinely found, find, found in the minds of people, the minds of our technical people who can work out where it might be, the minds of our, of our people who can put together programs in drilling uh, and evaluating the, the rocks. Mm -hmm. And our people that work for Oil Search, in my view, are world-class people. We have some very, very good people who work structural geology, who work specific technical issues. Uh, which are designed in PNG or for PNG environment. In over 20 odd years that I've been involved here, there have been some bad times, challenging times for the company and for the country. And whether we like it or not, All Search's future is very much tied up with Papua New Guinea's future. Papua New Guineans hold many key positions in All Search. Reporting directly to Mr. Botton, is Geria Alpi, Executive General Manager, External Affairs and Sustainability and Executive Director. Other individuals hold key technical and managerial positions, including Mapia Olewale, who heads up the Hides operations, with his back-to-back -back Moses Guva. Other senior managers based in Port Moresby office include Willie Kupo, General Manager, External Affairs, and Mrs. Linda Griffin, Manager of Human Resources PNG. Leon Buskins, General Manager of Finance PNG, and Michael Viari, General Manager of Commercial and Legal PNG. The company's petroleum engineering department is headed up by a longtime employee, Fiona Smare. Right, so I oversee um, all the petroleum engineers that work in the field and the uh, laboratory um, chemists as well, and our well integrity engineers that look after the uh, integrity of our wells that we produce. Um, so basically oversee all of them. On a daily basis we look at just optimizing production from our existing wells and also from our new wells that we bring online after drilling. And um, that's production and gas injection as well as water injection. And um, on the chemistry side, the, uh, with the lab chemists we look after the quality of our sales products like our crew that we export, the refinery um, fuel gas that we use, the jet fuel and diesel for the project. So we, the lab takes care of the quality of our sales product. And uh, our well integrity engineers basically look at ensuring that we can produce our oil safely um, through our wells and, and through the pipelines. I've worked for Oil Search for about 10 years now. When uh, Oil Search took over the uh, assets in um, PNG, the, the Chevron assets in PNG, I pretty much started working with them then from 2003. And uh, the highlights of my career, I suppose, with um, oil search as well is um, I went from, uh, you know, being petroleum engineer in the field. 2006, I went and spent a couple of years in uh, Sydney and was a reservoir engineer for um, close to four years. And then I came back into the field um, just in preparation for us getting into gas production. We took a little bit more risk in, in some areas but they paid out. 
you know, in terms of we found new areas that we uh, areas that were, we, you know, even with Chevron, the confidence was was 50-50 whether we would get some good oil production from there, and and you know, it ended up that we took the risk and it became successful, and we were able to basically add more oil to that sort of production profile. The U.S. multinational Chevron produced oil in PNG in the decade commencing in 1992, before these operations were taken over by Oil Search. PNG is on the cusp of a new era with the PNG LNG project led by ExxonMobil to commence LNG production and exports next year, following an ambitious 19 billion US dollar development. In the last decade, new gas projects are being considered for additional LNG productions as well, as well as production of condensate a light crude oil. It took a century of exploration before PNG first discovered and began to produce crude oil in 1992. That discovery by Chevron New Guinea created a great deal of euphoria that further discoveries would be made in the fold belt area that encompasses the Lake Kudabu area in Southern Highlands province. But that was not to be. Papua New Guinea oil production has been on a steady decline from the early years when a single oil field produced 150,000 barrels a day. Even though smaller discoveries were made in subsequent years at Moran, Gobi and Southeast Menanda, oil production today has fallen to around 30,000 barrels a day. It would have declined much further except for the success oil search has had in proving up additional reserves at these fields. Most recently there has been a significant additional reserves discovered at Menanda. The outlook is about to change in the coming year with the start of production of natural gas by the ExxonMobil led PNG LNG project. Over the estimated LNG project's 30 year life, condensate, which is similar to light crude oil from Kudabu, will also be produced from the gas fields at an average of 20,000 barrels a day and channeled through the current oil pipeline to the Kumul offshore terminal for export to PNG's traditional markets. In recent years, exploration companies have been making new gas discoveries and it is clear PNG is gas prone. The country is fortunate that some of these discoveries include recoverable quantities of condensate. These fields are referred to as wet fields. Most significant of these has been the discovery of the elk and antelope fields by the Interoil in the Gulf province. At present, Interoil is in discussion with ExxonMobil and possibly some other parties about use of the gas for production of LNG. The industry is hopeful that an agreement will be concluded in the coming year, paving the way for production of additional quantities of condensate for export. Other exploration companies are also assessing various gas discoveries for possible development. The leader in this regard is Horizon Oil and its key partners, Talisman Energy, Japan's Mitsubishi Corporation and Osaka Gas. Horizon has submitted an application to the Department of Petroleum and Energy for the conversion of its Petroleum Retention Licence 4 into a Petroleum Development Licence. Once this is approved, the company proposes to develop its Stanley Gas Condensate Field. The field is located some 270 kilometres from the coast and 40 kilometres north of the river port at Kiyunga in Western Province. Horizon is keen to develop this field initially to produce an estimated 4,000 barrels of condensate a day and is targeting the gas for a major power station that could provide electricity to the Octedi mine, Kiunga and to remote surrounding villages in Western Province. This is an exciting project that will speed up the pace of social and economic development in Western Province. Horizon Oil and its partners have two other gas fields in Western Province, near to Stanley, at Alavala and Ketu that it, that it hopes to develop subsequently. While the condensate can easily be exported to world markets, there is an expectation that this gas could be used as feedstock for a future LNG project. Development of Stanley has the potential to enhance PNG's industrial value, adding capacity with condensate barge for processing at Interall's Napa Napa refinery in Port Moresby. Since its construction a decade ago, as the largest single downstream industrial investment in PNG, the Interoil refinery has provided this country with a secure source of petroleum products at a time of great volatility in international markets. Processing of condensate from local operations would enhance the economic value of Napa Napa 
to the PNG economy, since much of the crude oil it now uses is imported from Southeast Asia. Since production began in 2003, Napa Napa has established itself as one of PNG's important industries, with export revenues of around 500 million kina, making petroleum products the nation's sixth largest export item. These developments show clearly that PNG's oil and gas sector is going through an exciting phase. Although in the immediate future, all of this will be overshadowed by the tremendous impact created when exports commence next year from the 19 billion US dollar PNG LNG project. That ends Resource PNG. I hope you enjoyed our special feature on oil production in PNG, brought to you by the PNG Chamber of Mines and Petroleum. If you have any comments or queries, do email us on this address, resourcepng at mtv.com.pg, or to find out more, check MTV online, that's www.mtv.com.pg, and go to our Resource PNG page, or you can check our page on Facebook. Thanks for your company. Bye for now.